Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you uh, what's new in Axiom 2.6. Uh, this update includes a lot of features that have been uh, requested for a long time. Uh, so lots of quality of life improvements, um, bug fixes, so on. So let's just get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show was a feature that was added in uh, 2.5, but I haven't shown it yet. And that is uh, if you use the painter tool here. Uh, you'll see that there are now some new modes. So in addition to being able to paint with your active block, uh, you can also paint with your clipboard. So if, for example, uh, we have this pattern of dirt over here, we can copy it to our clipboard like this. Uh, and now if we're using the painter tool here, you can see as we paint, it's going to be using uh, those blocks or that pattern uh, on our clipboard. Uh, the other option here uh, is gradient. So if you use gradient, uh, what you'll find is you can paint uh, basically with a gradient going uh, from the center of the brush to the outside. Uh, so similar to gradient painter, but also different. Uh, if we add uh, some blocks here, for example, let's do andesite and then we'll do, I don't know, gravel. Uh, and we paint with the nearest mode. You can see that... Um, starts with, uh, oh, maybe let me choose some blocks that are a bit more high contrast here, even if it looks bad, uh, something like this. And you can see it paints uh, from the center here with stone to granite to dirt. Uh, there are different interpolation options. So we can do, for example, linear, which uh, which looks something like this. So obviously there's more of a uh, uh, you know gradient between the layers here. Uh, if we turn on soft edge, it'll now um, make it so that the edge here uh, isn't hard, uh, which looks something like this. Uh, there's also an option for Bezier here, uh, which looks something like this. Uh, the other option is merge strokes. And what merge strokes will do is if you have, say, one stroke here and you do another stroke with merge strokes on, you'll see it uh, combines them, right? Uh, it takes the, the minimum of both strokes, but if you turn merge strokes off, the second stroke is going to go over top of the first one like that. Uh, so yeah, the gradient uh, here, pretty cool. You can use it to make uh, all kinds of cool things like for example, paths. So if we use, for example, some, uh, some dirt, dirt blocks here, uh, let's just do packed mud and dirt, let's swap those around. Uh, and you can see you can create um, nice paths like this. So that uh, that's the new painter options that were added in 2.5. We can now get uh, onto the features that were added in 2.6. Uh, the first of which is a shared uh, blueprints for um, multiplayer. So uh, if you go ahead and open up the blueprint browser here, you can see there if you're on a multiplayer server here, uh, there is a tab for server blueprints you can see um, and on our server here we have uh, all of these trees uh, which can be accessed by all players on the server. Uh, so for example we can go here uh, and we can click on Birch you see it downloaded the blueprint from the server. We can have it here, we can paste it in like normal etc. Uh, you can also upload to the server very very easily. All you need to do is uh, right click upload to server uh, and that'll get uploaded. So that is server blueprints. Uh, next up, we have keybinds for tools in the editor UI. So uh, there are a bunch of default uh, keybinds here. So for example, magic select is M. Uh, the box select here is B. Freehand select is N. Painter P, etc. Um, so you know you can easily uh, get. Uh, well, if you have your keybind set up, you can more easily get to the tool that you want. Uh, if you want to change the keybinds, you can of course do that in the keybinds menu here, uh, where you can bind every tool to a keybind if you want. Uh, there's also this other option called swap to last tool. And if we bind this, for example, to the tab key, what this will do uh, is it will swap between the last two tools we have. So this one is useful if you're switching between two tools a lot, you might want to uh, have this on. Uh, it can speed up the process quite a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and unbind that. And uh, moving on, we have the quick add keybind uh, on the creative mode search. So uh, if we uh, if we're in creative mode here and we're searching something, for example, stone, 
um, you'll see there's this little icon that shows up that tells you you can press enter to quick add first block. And so what that means is if you just simply hit enter, it'll add stone to your hotbar. Uh, and so this, uh, what this allows you to do is add blocks uh, to your hotbar without even moving your mouse, right? All you need to do is type, for example, red wool, hit enter, you get it. Press E, type, I don't know, andesite, hit enter, get it. So it's just an alternative uh, method for getting blocks, you know, other than, you know, using the, the number keys here or shift clicking it and manually moving it over. So should just, uh, you know, save a few, uh, shave a few seconds off there. Um, next up, we have uh, a feature in the builder mode here, which is uh, using control C to copy an exact block when you're looking at it. So this is similar to uh, pick block. But if we, for example, have oak stairs here, place down, if we look at the oak stairs and we press control C on our keyboard, uh, you'll see we get uh, an oak, uh, oak stairs in our hotbar here and it's enchanted. And this is a special block that when you place down, will always use the exact same uh, state uh, that the block you copied had. So uh, this works for stairs with, with rotation. It works for, for example, uh, fences here with all kinds of crazy, um, crazy setups like this. And so, yeah, this one can help um, particularly builders that like to do a lot of like debugging stuff, right? Um, you can just easily copy a block state and, and move it around. All right, uh, next up, we have the move to options that were added to the builder tools. So if you're, for example, uh, taking a region like this and moving it, uh, you'll see there's a third option now below confirm, and that is middle click to move to. And so if you were to middle click on an area here, you can see it moves our, um, our selection here to that point. And so this allows you to uh, bring these things over larger distances, uh, position it more accurately, uh, etc. So that's neat. Another thing you'll notice is uh, above the hop by here, it's telling us the offset. So if we're doing this and we're moving it a certain distance, you can see it tells us that we've offset it by 10 blocks or 20 blocks. And that, that just helps, again, if you need to um, move something more precisely. Uh, it also shows you the size and so on. Uh, I'll also, uh, this also works for smear, by the way, the middle click to extend. So if we're like smearing something here, uh, we can like smear it to a particular point here, right? Uh, which looks like this. So um, yeah, again, it's useful if you want to, to do this sort of thing with, uh, with more precision. And uh, next up we have uh, ruler tool measurements have been made permanent. So uh, now if you're using the ruler tool here and you measure something else, uh, something out, for example, you know, maybe you want to measure distance from here to here to here. Uh, now, if you switch to other tools, or even if you close the editor UI entirely, you'll see that these measurements stay around. Um, so now you can uh, mark mark stuff out with the ruler tool, uh, and then jump into builder mode here, and then uh, build based on these measure measurements. So that's a neat one. And obviously, if you want to remove them, you can go back to the ruler tool, hit delete, and continue on. The next option here is going to be related to the path tool. Uh, there are three options that were added to the path tool. Uh, use stairs and slabs, keep existing and extend to ground. So uh, first one, use stairs and slabs. If we have, say, uh, let's go from here to here, and we turn on use stairs and slabs, you'll see that now uh, the line that it's drawing uses stairs and slabs like so, like this. Um, and this works for all of the types. So you can do it with a DDA line. You can do it with, for example, a catenary. So if you want to do like a kind of um, bridge type thing, right? You can do, uh, let's get rid of that. If you want to do a bridge type thing right from here to here, you can do that. And you can see it's adding uh, those stairs and slabs. Uh, you know, you probably want to increase the radius or something, but yeah, as you can see, it's using stairs and slabs now. Um, the next option uh, is going to be extend to ground. So if you turn on extend to ground and you confirm, uh, what you'll see is that the uh, path is now extended all the way to, a ground, uh, to the ground until it hits a solid block, uh, which looks like this. So it's useful if you want to create, for example, walls or, or barriers of some kind, right? Um, you can uh, set it up like this and then uh, extend to ground, confirm, and, uh, and there you go. And obviously the last one is keep existing. So if you have keep existing on, uh, what it's going to do is it's uh, going to not replace existing blocks there. It's only going to replace air blocks. 
Uh, so those are the three options that have been added to the path tool. Hope you find that useful. Uh, next up, we have um, three operations that were added, three operations. Uh, the first one is the hollow operation, okay? And the way the hollow operation works is uh, if you look inside here, for example, this is um, this terrain is solid. Uh, but if you're building something, maybe you don't want it to be solid. Maybe you want it to be, um, you know, have air inside. What you can do is you can select it. You can use the hollow operation here. And then uh, what you'll see is that now the inside of this has been hollowed. Uh, now, the hollow operation is smart uh, in the sense that it knows uh, about how visibility works. So, for example, if you have a glass block here, or you know, even if we have a stair block or any sort of complex um, kind of block here, the hollow operation is aware of how these blocks work and it will make sure not to remove blocks that, that are still visible, right, according to um, Minecraft's rules here. Uh, let's go ahead and put that back. Uh, related to hollow, there uh, there's the operation fill gaps. So if, for example, you're, you're doing a lot of building and, you know, you end up with a bunch of, you know, um, gaps inside your terrain like this, um, big or small, right? Um, this can be annoying. And so what you can do is uh, if we, for example, set this to alabaster, uh, what we can do is we can select the area containing those um, uh, those blocks there and we can do the fill gaps operation. And what you'll see is that now all of those gaps have been filled like so. Lastly, there is the trigger updates operation. So let's go over to here, uh, chunk loading please, okay, here. And uh, the up, uh, update blocks or trigger updates operation, what it will do is if you have certain blocks, for example, say fences um, that uh, aren't connected, or if you have, for example, grass that is uh, floating, uh, for example, put on force place here. So you have like floating grass or, or any kind of um, block that that needs an update to to be fixed, right? Or, you know, for example, a, a stair here. That's, uh, that's wrong. Uh, if you select these and then you run the trigger updates operation here, uh, what you'll find is that obviously all the invalid blocks are removed. Uh, the fences and such are connected and stairs and stuff uh, revert to their normal state. So that is the uh, trigger updates operation. Uh, so three highly requested operations right there for you. Hope you find those useful. Uh, moving on, we have another option for the builder tools. And that is if you are moving something here, right? And let's say, for example, you want to move it on the z-axis here. Uh, or you might want to move it on the y-axis, but you don't want to look in that direction. What you can do is you can hold the key on your keyboard. So right now I'm holding the Y key. And what it's going to do is now I'm only going to be able to scroll it on the on the y-axis, right? So I can do something like this. Um, or, you know, if I, if I want to move it on the x-axis, I can do it like this. Um, and I can look in any direction that I want. Uh, and it will lock to the x-axis. So, yeah, it's just holding the x, y, and z keys to be able to do that. Um, next up, we have the ability to click on the trash can in the op menu. So if you have, for example, a lot of blocks here in your various hotbars and you want to clear them, you can now click on this uh, here and it will clear um, it will clear your, uh, your hotbars, uh, obviously excluding the one uh, excluding the hotbar that you have active right now. Next up, there is uh, world drag drop for pallets. So for example, if we go over here uh, and we, let's make a bit of a region here. And if I have a pallet, so let's go ahead and create a new pallet here. Pallet, pallet. And let's add some blocks, for example, granite and andesite. Uh, you can now drag the pallet here into the world, like you can drag normal blocks into the world and you'll be able to get a randomized uh, selection of blocks by dragging that pallet in. Uh, this also works for selection. So if you have a selection here, you can drag your pallet into that selection and it will get filled like so. So that is world drag drop for pallets. Next up, there is, um, I added no update infinite reach. 
uh, and replace mode support for water and lava buckets. So if you have a water bucket here and you have replace mode on, uh, you can now replace with water like so. Uh, and also works for infinite reach and no updates. Uh, don't think I really need to demo that. And uh, next up we have support for typing legacy IDs in the select block dialog. So I know some people um, really, really like the legacy IDs. So uh, you can now, for example, type one and that will give you stone, zero, air, eh, etc. You can type, I don't know, 73 for, for redstone ore. Um, these are pre-113 legacy IDs. Um, some people prefer to use these numbers. There you go, you now can. Uh, next up is support for importing legacy uh, pre-113 dot schematic files, so dot schem files, right, are normally supported. Uh, but now dot schematic files work as well. So, uh, for example, let me just uh, copy this thing here, and then let's um, let's export it, right? Let's export it to say uh, 1.8, um, right? And let's just hit save here. Uh, sure, unnamed dot schematic, fine. Um, okay, obviously some blocks, what is this, mud doesn't exist. Uh, I don't know, let's just replace that with dirt. Uh, and now if we import, uh, if we show all files here, right, you can see that, uh, where are you, this dot schematic file and we can import it um, just fine, like so. Um, obviously some, some issues here with, with note blocks or, or custom note blocks, but um, yeah, that's just what happens when you export to uh, 1.8. Um, and yeah, so that is support for legacy schematics. Um, I also added various tinker interactions. So for example, um, this and skull. So, you know, you can now, uh, if you now have tinker active, you can grow and move around a pumpkin uh, stem like that. If you have a skull or a banner, you can now rotate the skull or banner by clicking on it, like so. Now, the last thing I'm going to show, because I accidentally skipped over it, is the open reference image uh, option here. Uh, and so what this allows you to do uh, is browse to a .png or .jpg and open it up. And what you'll get is this little window here, right? Uh, and it stays even when you, well, it doesn't stay. If you uh, click on show in game UI, it stays even when you swap over here. Uh, so this can be used for references, uh, reference images, things like this. Uh, there's a few options here um, that you can control. So for example, you can change the, the filtering from nearest to linear, depending on whether it's pixel art or, or something else. You can also turn on uh, borderless, which looks something like this. And yeah, so just a kind of a neat little feature there for, for having reference images in game that you can uh, reposition and such. Uh, and that is the Axiom 2.6 update. Uh, a lot of highly requested features. Uh, very glad to get this one out. Uh, I hope you find uh, all of these things helpful. I will see you all later. Bye.